Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome to another installation of Practical Creativity, where we are talking with creative people and entrepreneurs, unpacking the process of creativity so we can demystify it and put it to use in our own lives. I'm super excited to be with you today and to have my fabulous guest, um, Mr. Diego Acosta, who is a friend for a couple of years now, also a creative industry person, many, many, many hats you wear, and um, also an entrepreneur, a professor. So Diego, tell, tell us just a little bit about yourself and what you're up to right now. Marta, first of all, thank you for hosting me. I appreciate the, the invitation. I, uh, I admire you for uh, everything that you've done. Uh, it's a great friendship that we do have. And uh, so what do I do? Well, life can change so rapidly and, uh, and it's up to us on how we take that. Uh, right now I'm at home where now I have my studio. And after years of having a, a studio, I moved here and it's been a fun thing to do. And let me put it in, con in a little bit of a, in perspective of what was I supposed to do right now. Uh, I am a guy of many hats, which I love. I'm a full-time uh, audio professor at the Miami International University of Art and Design. So those classes moved online. And one of the things that I have to do was create uh, the shelves for those classes because audio was not previously taught online. There were other uh, departments that did had already their shelves in place. So that has been a ton of work there alone, which has been very exciting. It allows me to do something that I had in my plans for many years, which was upload uh, instructional videos to YouTube, which has been a whole other journey. Um, my production company, BBXP, was supposed to be doing right now a whole bunch of uh, events in many different places of the world. Uh, we were scheduled to do about 14 events in four different countries. And of course, those of them are canceled to, or postponed to further to next notice. Uh, I am the production manager for Jerry Rivera, and we had a, a great lineup of shows again in different countries and we are on hold until next uh, uh, advice. So it's, it's been a, a drastic change of plans and, uh, and it's been a good one as well. Uh, things happen for a reason and, and it's been a, a very great time to self-discover, to do the things that I normally been in the run. I, I couldn't have done it. Uh, great times to to learn about ourselves and about the topics that we love and, and to enjoy home I guess nice and how are you um, so I understand the whole thing about YouTube I, I've been uh, putting these videos on YouTube afterwards just to make them more accessible to people but you're right it's like a whole other skill to to learn how to to do the uploading and the show notes and all the things. So like, I applaud you and I, I feel you. <laughs> um, you. I'm not gonna say feel your pain because I don't think it's painful, but like, I get that. <laughs> uh, new skills. Um, so tell me, what is it like to, uh, to teach online? Interesting, very interesting. Um, first of all, uh, I guess I, I've been lucky in the sense that I get to teach what I'm super passionate about and and that in a one-to-one -one, uh, meeting is, is kind of easier to transmit. On here, the classes are not synchronous, meaning there's not necessarily this connection that two of us are having. Although I do have office hours and, uh, and optional meetings that I record, but is it, that part is interesting. How do I get to put these on a video or in a paper to get these excitement to, to the students? So that has been the first challenging part where you learn to communicate in different ways. Um, I think the generation now is a generation that probably is not uh, the same that we probably were, where a lot of, where, I don't know, I don't wanna, I don't wanna say anything that is not true, but you gotta communicate with the students now in multiple ways and you don't know how you're gonna get to them. So 
writing is part of it, videos is part of it, audio is part of it, meaning that I will leave feedback, I will create regular videos in the face-to-face -face situation where I am talking to them, but I'm actually talking to myself mm -hmm. uh, because they are asynchronous. Then I do these weekly meetings with them and some of them can or want to show up, some others never show up. So there are some faces that I've never seen. Yet some of those faces do deliver fantastic work, some others unfortunately not. Um, so the challenge there has been, the first one has been communication. How do you get to the person? And therefore I am using the orchestra mm. <laughs> situation where I am using all of the possible instruments to get to the students. Um, and then that's the other thing. I am, um, because our school has campuses in different cities of the country, um, to some of them, you kind of know them already and try to, uh, the students I have had in the past, try to get to them in the way that you know them. But there are so many people that I've never met. And, and so many of us are struggling in different ways. So you got to have that a uh, mentality of being as open-minded as possible. Because some students may say, you know what, I cannot turn in the assignment. And some of them, you don't know what's their situation. And, and you got to play with them. And then you get to discover which ones are the lazy ones because of multiple situations and which other ones are really struggling to make it work. So you have to be strict to, the, to a point, but then you cannot be too strict. You have to be open-minded, but then you still have to demand that of them. So it's been a great juggling game on, again, being as open-minded as you possibly can, but yet you have to ask for, for, for them to deliver. Um, so it's been a, a very interesting time on that aspect. Yeah, for sure. I love what you're saying about kind of communicating on multiple platforms. You never know which is the one that like, some people like text messages, some people like Facebook, some people um, will not do any of those things. So it's, it's kind of like, um, when I was talking to Maureen earlier, she was talking about how do you reach out to donors at this time? And, and the whole point is like, you make human contact and you learn based on the relationship how to do that. So with your new students, it is very hard because you don't know them well enough to be able to know how to like kind of calibrate your communications approach. Wow, okay. Um, tell me, um, I know that you're, you uh, have a meditation practice are you finding, you're very chill with your approach. So you're like, well, things happen for a reason. I'm just gonna accept this. For some who might be struggling with just kind of um, making a turn or accepting the situation, what are you doing in your life that you would recommend to help them kind of get to where you are? Like, how did you get to be this Zen, I guess? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been years in the making, sorry. Um, I just think I kicked the table. It's been years in the making. Uh, one great day I, I discovered meditation because I guess life took me there. And it's a practice that I, I do it daily in multiple ways, shapes and form and that has evolved. Um, some people are afraid of the word meditation, which uh, I can understand, but some of uh, the situations would be do whatever brings you peace. Uh, I like sometimes to recommend uh, breathing exercises, which ends up being meditation. It's just that it's, for some people, it's easier to take the breathing exercises as a routine. But uh, you have to feed your souls above all. And it's your, your one soul and not anyone else. So you gotta find, and the first thing is that you gotta find whatever your soul is asking to be fed with. And to me, that's daily meditation and I have explored many of them. And just because you ask me, the, uh, there's one in the, I think iOS, because I use that. And, um, and uh, there's also, I don't know if it's an Android or no, but well, I started with Headspace and that was my beginning to meditation many years ago. Uh, I've done TM, which is Transcendental Meditation. I've done the Yogananda ones. Uh, there is an application, a free app, which is called Oak. And what I like Oak is not only that it's free, 
uh, but it also has the breathing exercises. Hmm. So relaxation, box, so there's multiple breathing. I think there's three or four really great breathing exercises for sleep, for calmness, uh, oak. I use daily the uh, Sam Harris one called uh, Waking Up. Waking Up, yeah. You've um, me. Recently, I'm fascinated by a series called the Headless series, which is the science of the first person. Uh, which is uh, it's something that I'm still understanding, therefore I'm not going to discuss, but it's there. Um, Headla is, so waking up has a cost, but if you email them and tell them that you're struggling with this, um, they, will, they will give you a membership for free. So I don't know, this has been my, my way to feed my soul. Uh, I have a guru that I talk to, um, but again, I think we're all so different that you have to do whatever fits your own soul. It does, well, I was going to say wake, uh, walking outside, but too many of, of us in the world right now is not that easy. For us, it hasn't been that easy, which kind of, um, it's a thing that we don't know if it's good or bad, but we can walk outside. Uh, but too many people that may see this or watch this um, interview, it might not be the reason, but whatever that is, if that is, as long as it's healthy and it's feeding your soul, please do not go and pack chocolates because I would have done that. <laughs> or at least share, share the ones that you're enjoying. Um, it's an ongoing thing, I guess. I don't know. It's, it's, and, and I think the only re remedy for that is that it happens regularly, daily. Um, and yeah, I cannot... I cannot talk about, I cannot talk enough good about meditation because it definitely changed my And how did you, that's amazing. I, I love all of the resources you've just shared. We'll, we'll put links to everything in the, in the show notes, but how did you discover that meditation was the food for your soul? Because it resonated on me. And since the first time that I did it, it resonated on me. And, and that's what I probably just got the, when you have something that is feeding your, your heart and you follow that, I guess you'll find great things. And, and that's what happened. It came out of, it's interesting. I, I love juggling, I love the circus. And then one day I watched a TED talk, probably, I don't know, eight years ago or so. And the guy was juggling and that's probably what I got into the TED talk. And it was these, uh, the, one of the creators of, of uh, the, um, mindful app andy i don't want to pronounce his last name because i'm gonna get it wrong but it's andy something and he was juggling and through juggling was explaining meditation and and i got into the one wow so yeah it's i know so many people who juggle but i can't do it myself <laughs> Good. the Wait. truth is that ever sorry i interrupt but um ever since i was a kid my dad had a guy that was coming to treat him and the guy had um, Asian connections, meaning that he was trained by a Korean guru and they were alternative medicine practice, practitioners. And the, the word medicine wasn't used then, but I really liked it, all of this. And he was actually calling breathing exercises, Fabian, and, and I was doing that many, many years ago. So I started to meditate without knowing it was actually meditation. How cool! You kind of stumbled upon it in your own in your own home. That's that's a really nice way to to kind of start the practice. It is. So, tell me, um, you as we talked about at the beginning, you wear many hats, and your creativity is um, takes many forms. So, how do you stay organized, and how do you make sure you have that time to feed your soul? Because life and i know you're on the road most of the time not right now right but like you travel you have probably more passport stamps than anyone i know so <laughs> how do you how do you keep your yourself fed and how do you kind of like prioritize and manage your own time um i guess that comes from what we've discussed and what i learned from my mother which she was always on us saying prioritize 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 and and with the years I yes <laughs> and and with the years I've learned that that priority comes to feed yourself and that comes first thing in the morning 
Uh, so the meditation and all of these things, uh, may I do it at another time? Hell yeah, especially if I'm traveling. Uh, sometimes I do it at whatever the time I can or will do it. But if I can, if it's in my power, I'll do those things first thing in the morning. So anything that comes feeding my own soul comes first thing in the morning. Um, then a lot of them was learning to delegate and uh, I've been fortunate enough to have great partners in life. All of my business partners are fantastic people, which I deeply thank them and appreciate them. Um, so teamwork uh, does fantastic things. Uh, then make sure that you have your, I'm moving my camera because over there in my wall is my to-do list and, uh, <laughs> and I stand up out of this place. I, I try not to keep my, the thoughts in my mind because they disturb me. So I rather stand up, write them, whatever I have to do, and then I will come back. And it's great. It's a great silly feeling that no matter how important or small those things are, they are on that wall. And, by, and, and I stand up to cross them out as well. So, and I don't erase them. The reason being by the end of the day or early the next day, I can see what it really got done. And those are the tiny things that will bring you happiness or achievement, the feeling of having done things. Um, and that's the other way I can keep my mind kind of free is because most of my mind is there and not here. So I can focus on whatever I am doing at that precise time or moment. I love that. Um, I have a leaderboard of sticky notes over there with different colors for different projects. And um, I have like six here today. I took off the wall that are like the things that I want to get done today. But I love what you're saying, like find a way to get it out of your head so that you don't have to remember it anymore. And then the second thing is celebrating your achievements, like taking a moment and saying, wow, look at everything that I did or look at the projects I added value to, even if I'm not done. It's a tremendous practice that I, I feel like most of us just get hard on ourselves about what we haven't done, but being able to actually sit back and, and have a record of that. For a while, I was, um, I was doing a daily, here are my priorities, here's what happened in reality, <laughs> and here's what I, I wanna do tomorrow. And that's gone back and forth, but um, the sticky notes, I'm always messing with ways to do this. So I love asking people that question, like how do you stay organized? Because <laughs> I always feel like there's some better way than how I'm doing it right now. And maybe it's just my personality likes variety, <laughs> I don't know. But it's really cool to hear kind of how you organize it and that you do give yourself credit, like this got done. It's, it's really nice to be able to have that moment to celebrate. Uh, like you, I, I have done lots of reading in the subject trying to get more things done in a day. And, um, and there are many advanced formulas, ways, maestros and situations, but knowing myself and after years of, of this explanation, exploration, I, I stopped that route and I have kept it as simple as possible. And I was thinking to myself this morning, it's like, I don't, I don't remember being more productive than what I am right now because of, keeping things simple. If things go on the board, if things get crossed out, and by the end of the day, I, I can actually delete them. And, and it just feels great and I get a lot done. So it's great. not much of a formula. I like it though, simple. Keep it simple. It's, it's very <laughs> simple. It, it's been one of the things of the quarantine was, has been uh, to keep things as simple as possible in, in many aspects. And I guess with simplicity, sometimes requires to get the best of whatever you can. So um, I've, uh, I'm learning to invest in the sense of w the things that are worth. And, uh, and sometimes, sometimes less is more, not always, but, but uh, knowing what the best thing, I guess, that you can get. And sometimes those things are the simplest ones. Absolutely. It's funny, my, my car lease was up this summer and I was seriously thinking about not getting a car, <laughs> but I did. And so now I've simplified my life to the point where I go and wash off the salt because it's right next to the seawall, but I'm not driving it very much. So it's not like it gets out. So I'm thinking I could have probably simplified looking back, but I had no idea that we were going to be in this situation we were in. So it is what we'll it is. You'll come out of this one and you'll enjoy the car for sure. Yeah, 
it's nice for traveling with surfboards and, and transporting things back and forth. Yeah. So, um, tell us also, you are, you are from Ecuador and your family is primarily there. How are you managing your professional and, and obviously you have contacts all over the world working with Jerry Rivera, you're flying here and there and everywhere. How are you keeping your, your contacts, especially your family time kind of, um, as part of your life in balance, whatever balance means to you, as well as your, all of your many professional commitments that you have. Thank you. Um, thank God for technology, I guess. Um, not only is not only is free if you want to say it, but it's so again you have so many ways, and I end up communicating with them in different manners. Um, we we use a lot of WhatsApp. The app in, in America is not that much used, but in, for Latin America, it's super used. Zoom or Go to Meeting works really well. Um, and the great thing is that you, on these times, you always find somebody home. So <laughs> it's, there's not that many excuses not to get the, to them. So under the circumstances, uh, I, I communicate with uh, my parents, my siblings. My, one of my brothers is in Ecuador. The other one is in Washington, D.C. Nice. The great thing is that it's an ongoing communication where you're touching bases with them, making sure that all families are good and food is part of the conversation because everybody's at home and exploring uh, my my parents their own have their own situations of what they're doing my mother wasn't much of a cook now she's become a fantastic cook and she has had the time to spend with my mother and, uh, and his girlfriend so uh, i don't know it's been thank thank god and and in the universe because they're all in, in great shape and, and we get to enjoy and understand that under these circumstances we are we're healthy and we are wise enough to understand what we should at least do or, or not to do. That's amazing and I'm hearing a lot of gratitude as well. This is something that's come up in almost every conversation is really looking at this as an opportunity to actually notice what is going right and has been and almost with this layer of like achievement and do, 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 we're starting to be more. And part of that is um, being more kind of like top of mind of like the blessings that we have in life. And it's great to have, you know, family and feel connected even if you're on a different continent. So that's, that's really cool. So what are you what are you reading these days? You're one of the most prolific readers I know, and usually you're on a plane, and <laughs> now you're not on planes. But um, tell me, what are you? What's inspired uh, right now? The book is Awareness by Anthony Di Mello, the current one in the Kindle. It's a fantastic book. Don't take things personal, uh, meaning not to you but to the world. Understand that awareness is one of the biggest things that you can be when you are aware of things. Things can be so different and, and understand that things are not personal for the most part. Uh, it's a short book. I highly recommend people. And that's what it's in the table right now. Mm -hmm. um, my Happy Body book, which is just a reference. I do the Happy Body training. Shout out to those guys in San Francisco. Um, great people, super healthy. Um, if you're a person that likes to work out but doesn't like to sweat that much and results go to them and they're not paying this ad whatsoever <laughs> <laughs> and, and so yeah awareness is the one book that it's in my mind then uh, uh, there's another one uh, el evangelio de jesucristo um, by uh, i think the author is nelly it's a new book that i'm starting to catch out um interesting book and it actually is funny because as i'm reading i'm understanding the the times that we're living change of eras mm. and i'm loving uh, not that much reading time as i wish because of um i don't know it's uh, i i can i i hear lots of people having lots of time and partially i'm envying them and some of the time it's been like lots of work uh, 
which I um, I'm grateful for. Me too. Um, so what are you working on for your own projects right now? Okay, so uh, if I go through the list, uh, well, school, I mentioned it's lots of content creation. And Viva, it's an interesting one because we were so ready for all of these magnificent events and, yeah. and things changed drastically. So we're still um, having lots of conversations with my partner on what's next. And it's such a huge question mark. And I believe the success of that company came from the sense of knowing what we really felt we were about to do. And the events that we've done are always events with, a, with an intention and with lots of feeling, passion, dedication, where the creativity comes out to the light. And so that one is kind of stuck right now, being honest, because we don't know what's next. We don't know when the phone will ring what we will be able to do or not. So things are not very clear in there. Thankfully, we were responsible of how we were managing that company. So things are good. Um, Revolving, which is an audio mobile track, we are trying to find ways of, I think that that one is going to open up really quick because on the sense that someone will need to start record audio or video at different locations. So Zoom has been fantastic for this, but to take it to the pro level, so having been able to have a studio at your disposal anywhere that you are, it might be a business that will open up really soon. Um, Jerry shows, huge question mark. We were, uh, it was funny because I keep getting on the schedule, the places that I was supposed to be that I'm not, of course, and I've traveled the world already. Yeah, I bet. Without being anywhere. <laughs> so uh, we had shows in Santiago de Chile, in Colombia. Uh, we were touring Europe. Uh, so that one is completely in standby. And there's not much to, to do. Uh, there were plans on releasing the new songs. And things are setting down, I think. And then uh, I was about to start mixing a double... CD was 20 songs for a, a great fun album that I had with them. And uh, that wasn't possible because the last recordings were not done because that's when Corona hit. So um, we are waiting on the last vocals to be recorded to then being able to mix. But because life is great, the phone rang and I'm mixing a 17 song musical. So I'm I'm doing this big project, wow. uh, which is not only great for me in the sense of being active and, and doing something that I love, but it is the uh, the piece that the composer had worked his entire life. So he had put his whole life and soul into it. So we, I got feedback from the first mix and he was super happy. So that's a big part of my payment, seeing people achieving their goals and success. I love that. And I think that's so important because what you said earlier about feeding your soul and nobody else can do that for you. And so if you're not doing that and you're not doing that all the time or you're not doing that one project that is like your bucket list project, I mean, what you're describing is you're helping this guy feed his soul, which is a really beautiful thing. And, you know, you're like a catalyst for other people's creativity. You make people sound good, right? Um, so I think that's a, that's a really beautiful thing to be kind of an enabler of other people's dream projects and successes. Amazing. It is pretty awesome in that sense, though. They've worked on this. The writers have created or worked on their music for so long. In this case, the guy has worked in this for 20 years. He recorded it, yeah, recorded it last year, and he was so hesitant about sending it and you don't want to screw that up and yet it's your taste and so besides being a job there is a moral uh, situation there where you have to to bring this to life and, and out of the all the many people that he could have chosen to do this fine work for him he chose me so I am extremely honored and at the same time responsible for for this work.
That's so amazing. And you're helping him, looking at your list back there, <laughs> you're helping him check a really big item off his list. So that <laughs> yeah. must feel really yeah. great. <laughs> yeah, 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 it does. It definitely does. Amazing. Of um, course. Go ahead. Yeah. Nope, you do. Uh, tell me also, this has been a really fantastic, really fun conversation. It's really great to hear what's going on. It's great to hear your thoughts. It's great to hear how you're how you're managing your time and your your all your projects and your family. What gives you hope right now for what might be on the other side of this whole coronavirus thing? That's a fantastic question. And the first thing is, um, I think that we should not get ahead of the time and and leave this moment. Uh, there are so many geniuses out there that know absolutely nothing. Uh, and and I don't, I'm not trying to find the answers. Uh, this is time for the real experts to do what they have to do. So I'm trying to listen to the people that I trust and, and be as respectful of that because that's what I believe should be done. Uh, and I'm trying not to rush times meaning uh, I'm enjoying home. I enjoy this time for myself. I'm making the most out of what I can and, and just live in this moment. I, if you see it in the good positive way, how many people could have desired the moment to be at home for this long and get things done? So I guess you better get things done. I still have, my list I still have many things to do. The things that you're not seeing, there's still lots of work to get done in here in the sense of putting the studio together, of things that I have, I don't know, lots of cleaning that still needs to be done. So I'm okay with the quarantine. And, and things will, will play the way that they are supposed to play as long as we keep on working with the goals and the cloud will move. And, and I think those of us that wait for the, patiently wait for the cloud to move, we'll, we'll see the sun on the other side when, when it's ready to come. I love that. Also, I'm reading a book called The Everyday Work of Art by Eric Booth, and he says pretty much it's, if you're an artist, oh, sorry, this is Jerry Saltz. Jerry Saltz just wrote a book. Um, he's a famous art critic um, from The New Yorker. The New Yorker did the piece. Anyway, Jerry Saltz was saying the work of being an artist means that things happen when you work, things don't happen when you don't work. And an artist's nature is always to be working. So yeah. It's nice to be able to just be and accept and be present and even enjoy some of the things that are a little more time or a little more at homeness or a little more aloneness or whatever it happens to be um, that we have been craving. And to be able to, I agree with you, just step back and say, like, that's a gift and I'm going to enjoy it, I think is a really great, um, a really great piece of advice. So cool. Well, thank you. This has flown by. I could talk to you for hours, um, but I want to thank you for coming on. I want to thank um, everybody who's watching, and this will be up on YouTube. We'll put um, the links to the meditation apps and the books that Diego had referred to. In the meantime, um, let us know if you have any questions or any people that you'd like to see on the stream. So this is my 27th day out of 30 that I committed to doing this every weekday. And it's just so great to, to reconnect with people like you, Diego. This is really awesome. So thank you for joining me. And I hope everybody stays creative. Thank you, Marty. You are a great source.